everybody welcome back to my monthly recap today we are diving into all of the books i read in july this month is definitely my best month that i've ever had i actually have a stack of books right here so if you see a little sneak peek there they are it is a total of 22 books i believe and if you're counting like novellas and stuff it'll be 24 which is just insane for me i had such a great reading month and i'm so excited to share what i read this month and go in chronological order um my goodreads is linked down below i recently started looking at storybook i think that's what it's called it's a new app that isn't owned by amazon which is a lot better <laughs> you know we don't want to support um amazon but sometimes you know goodreads is just so good but on storybook um I really hope that's what it's called. I think there's a lot more features, so I'm going to try to dabble into that. So I might link that down below as well if you want to check that out. So the first book that started off my July reading is The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren. This is actually my second book from these two authors, and it was so good. I've actually been hearing a lot about one of her or one of their other books. Um, I think it's like, I can't remember what it's called, but if... I might put it on the screen or somewhere on my screen that way you guys know what I'm talking about but I think I'm gonna get that book because both of the books that I've read by then it has been five out of five stars for me um this one was a little enemies to lovers romance fake dating trope you know but it was really interesting it kind of had two subplots in it and I thought that was interesting but anyways yeah this was my first book and I gave it a five out of five the next book I have is invisible girl by Lisa Jewell this is my second book that I've ever read by her and I rated it four out of five I think I rated then she was gone five out of five but these thrillers are so good I actually have two more of her books on my shelf that I want to read just because I love her writing it isn't necessarily fast-paced but it's also not slow paced while you're reading the book you can make your guesses on who you think it is and sometimes it is predictable like you're like oh yeah I got that immediately but other times you're surprised and I just thought this one was so good I definitely think then she was gone was my like favorite out of the two but this one was also really good so I read a another thriller but this one is romance it's by my favorite author of this year Colleen Hoover also is it Colleen or Colin Col Colleen Colleen or Colleen I say Colleen but I've been hearing people say Colleen so if you guys know let me know I don't know but <laughs> I just said no so many times anyways this book was so good I think I rated it five out of five yeah I rated it five out of five it was um, a very quick read for me I think I read it within two three days two days three <laughs> I don't know but um, I really love her storytelling I think this was the fourth book that I read from her and I genuinely think all the books that I've read have been five out of five from her so if that says anything so I actually borrowed this book that I'm about to mention from my neighbor so I don't have the physical copy but it's called Every Breath by Nicholas Sparks. This was my first Nicholas Sparks uh, book I ever read. I love his movies and all of that so I definitely want to start reading more of his books but this book was so interesting and it made me want to go to Kindred Spirit. Um, hopefully one day I'll go there but here's an image of it. Um, I liked it. I rated it 4 out of 5. Next, I have a cult classic by Sally Rooney. It's Normal People. I actually tabbed this book and honestly I rated it 3 out of 5. It wasn't my most favorite book from her, but um, I thought it showed like the true depths of high school college age students and I think it was a cool coming of age. Um, but it kind of made me sad. I'm currently watching the Hulu series, so I'll let you guys know what I feel about that um, when I finish it I don't know I think I've watched two episodes of it I honestly kind of forgot about it but yeah this book was interesting I just rated it three out of five because it wasn't like my most favorite book but it wasn't bad either I definitely want to read her two other books I think she has a book called conversations with people or yeah Con conversations with friends and I believe she's coming out with a new one here shortly so I definitely want to give this author another chance because I know she's very popular next I have um another one of my favorite authors Taylor Jenkins Reid's novel Malibu Rising this was a new release um this summer and I thought it was really good it's like a historical fiction type of story um I thought there was a lot of characters introduced and it made me like want to rate it like anywhere from like a 304 so maybe I'll settle on a 3.5 for this book. Um, I thought it was good. I really enjoyed it. It made me want- I read it by the pool so it was just like very 
fitting for the time period and it made me want to learn how to surf but I enjoy this book and if you like Taylor Jenkins Reid um, in historical fiction I would give it a chance. I have Rock the Boat by Beck Dory Stein. I think this is a new release that she just came out with this month and um, I think it might be her first fiction but this was Maddie Mayo's um, book club of the month. I always read her book club so you guys should just expect that you will see the book of the month there. Um, but yeah, I thought this was good. I rated it 3 out of 5. It wasn't anything extraordinary or anything like that, but I think the cover is so cute and it's such a cute little beach read. So um, yeah, I enjoyed it. I have another book that I borrowed. It was actually from my boyfriend's dad and it's called Mountains Beyond Mountains, The Quest of Dr. Paul Farmer, A Man Who who would cure the world, excuse me. I rated it four out of five. It was such a good nonfiction. It's about an anthropologist and a doctor, Paul Farmer. And basically it's, it's almost told as a fiction story about his life. Like I felt like I was reading fiction, but it was nonfiction and there was some educational stuff. And I just love books like that, that are nonfiction. And I'm getting a lot of like knowledge from, but I'm reading it like a fiction book where I'm just immersed in the world and really just like, living in a different fantasy i guess but um i would definitely recommend that especially if you want to go into medicine or medicine is something you find intriguing um i'm really in inter interested in anthropology and so that book was very important for me to read next book i read is call me by your name by andre Asiman. hopefully i'm pronouncing that right this book and movie is so popular i feel like i don't even need to talk about it i I didn't think I was gonna like it as much as I did, but I rated it four out of five. It was a beautiful romance story. I mean, it's a little weird, a 17 year old and a 24 year old man. It's, there's some, that's an interesting topic to debate on, but I thought it was really beautifully written. It was really poetic and I didn't think this needed a sequel, but it ended up having a sequel, which I'll talk about um, later. But um, yeah, I enjoyed this. I wish the movie cover was on the front just because, you know, I don't really like that but anyways oh my gosh guys even thinking about these like pulling these up is a get a life um take a hint and after eve like sister books i don't know i'll talk about these two first basically talia herbert wrote all three of these books about these three sisters this is the eldest this is the middle and then i'll talk about the younger soon these books are so good they touch on like real hard um topics like um chloe has fibromyalgia um her boyfriend red or me Red was in an abusive relationship and she mentions it in front of each of these that they all suffer from something and I just think that is so interesting and I literally, I just like how she's taking like real world and it's not necessarily, all of these aren't heteronormative which I think is a big issue that we see in books and they're diverse um, characters. I mean we have three black women who are all shapes, ages, sizes, you know, I really like that. But these two, I rated them four out of five. I really love these. I read this one in one day. Um, actually, after I finished Call Me By Your Name, I read this in one sitting and I was like, I cannot stop. I need to read this series because it is so good. But um, yeah, we have these two, four out of five. And this one was my favorite, Actor Abe Eve Brown. Eve Brown. Um, it was so good. Ah, I even thinking about it, it was it's kind of like an enemies to lover. Oh, that's another thing. Like these all have certain tropes. So this is an enemies to lover type of thing, and then this is friends to lovers, but also a fake dating trope, and then this is enemies to lovers. And so I just love it. I, anyways, just talking about it. But yeah, this one was a five out of five compared to these two. But these are a cl these are like four point five basically. Okay, and now we're going back to Call Me by Your Name. This is the sequel. I thought this was good. It talked about Elliot's father and um, then it talked about Elio and another relationship. It basically had three stories in it and I really thought that was interesting. I was a little confused at the beginning because I was like, I didn't think Elio's father and his mother were like, they weren't happy, but I thought it was really good. It was a good conclusion. I don't think the first book necessarily needed it. Like you don't need to read this book. And I think I rated this three out of five. It wasn't as good as the original, um, but it was still good and um, yeah. I like it. If you like Call Me By Your Name and you want to learn more about the, um, about where the people go, then this is a good one. Getting close to the end, I promise. Um, so the next one I have is another non-fiction book. It is for one of the classes I took this summer, and it's called Feminism is for Everybody, Passionate Politics. I rated this, um, three out of five. I thought it was good, and I think everyone should read it, but it wasn't my favorite book, um, I'm really glad I read it though by Bell Hooks. She's a very like well-known black feminist and I think everyone should read her works and I think everyone should be a feminist. Is that controversial to say? Hopefully not because 
hopefully my demographic agrees that we should all be feminists but we're going to talk about all the rest of the books it is eight books um but if you split it up because there's two books that have two novellas in it then that would be 10 books so anyways hopefully that makes sense i am just going to pull them out now all of these were four out of five for me maybe a 4.5 this series was so good i started it july 24th today's july 31st i finished 10 books 10 i finished six books and four novellas in um in between that time so if that doesn't tell you how much i love this series i don't know what to say but hopefully you guys know what i'm talking about but i am talking about the shatter me series wow this series was so good and i'm so excited it's actually coming out with the fifth novella on november or something i'm forgetting the date now but it's going to be all from the love interest um point of view and i'm very excited for that but i'm sad that i have to wait until november that's literally like four months away um but anyways, yeah, this is literally all the books I read this in such a short amount of time. And by the way, what I'm saying is these are novellas. Like these are the books that have novellas, but there's two of them. So I, I read, I keep on saying this, but I read eight physical books, but like 10 pieces of works. I don't know. Hopefully that makes sense. But yeah, I think these covers are literally so beautiful. Like this one's my favorite one, Ignite Me, the third book. Um, and I'm excited for the novella that's coming out because I think that one will be my favorite. But, um, yeah, I need to set these down because they're going to get all, all out of order. Anyways, guys, that was all the books I read for the month of July. I had such a good reading month and I can't wait for August. I think my reading will probably go down, which nothing's wrong with that. It doesn't matter how many books you read in a month. But, um, basically i am going to be starting school here shortly i actually only have one more week until i'm back in lawrence which is exciting but like wow summer went by so fast um so yeah i'm very excited that i got to talk about all these books hopefully you guys enjoyed watching my camera is about to die i will see you guys next month for a another um little book recap but i'll see you in between with more videos if you guys want to see lifestyle videos just hit the subscribe button it would be greatly appreciated and i hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day peace and love bye guys